First, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. And hello, everyone. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now. As always, appreciate you joining us. We are live streaming on our website and apps and Facebook and YouTube. So thanks for being a part of this. We cover a wide range of topics here on this show. And right now, we're talking about some pretty cool research coming out from Oregon State University and advancement in carbon capture. What is that, you may be asking, in case you don't know? Well, it's the idea of taking carbon out of the atmosphere. There's DAC, direct air capture. There's a lot of terminology to go into this, but the idea is removing some of that carbon from the atmosphere. And to talk about this, we have an expert. That's not me. We are joined now by Professor May Nyben from Oregon State University. And, uh, and Professor, thank you very much for joining us. You know, really, really appreciate it. And I think you know, to start off, just so everybody can kind of be on the same page, can you talk about carbon being in the atmosphere and why it is that we're trying to remove that. Sure. Well, thanks again for the invitation to be here. So, so carbon dioxide is a byproduct of burning fossil fuels. And this is factories, any energy production, this is driving your cars. And, you know, with the onset of the industrial age and, um, and advanced uh, lifestyles and third world countries coming up to first world countries, there's just more and more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And these molecules, along with other molecules in the atmosphere, cause the heat not to escape the atmosphere, but to reflect back. And this is what's known as, as global warming, but uh, more generally global climate change. So this includes the more extreme climate events that we're observing, you know, anything from, from hurricanes to flooding, um, high winds, uh, unexpected snows, etc. So huge ramifications for a lot of different things then that are going on from this with, with the carbon being in the atmosphere. And I know there's been a lot of different ways and studies and, and attempts at trying to mitigate some of that, but one of those is capturing that carbon and, and taking it out of the atmosphere. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, again, just as a general idea of, of how that would work? How it would work? Well, okay, so first of all, there's um, kind of three places where it can work. So you have a factory, you capture it right where it escapes into the atmosphere. So that's called capture at the source. Um, you can also, uh, well, what I'm working on is direct air capture, so DAC. Okay, so this is, we are sitting at about 400 parts per million carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So this is 0.02%. Um, and so direct air capture is you have some material that will react with this very, very small amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Small, but significant and important. Um, the third way is it goes into the ocean. So that's ocean acidification. That just happened. And um, how you do it, so I actually go to molecule here. So we have uh, carbon and it's bonded to two oxygens. So the carbon's the black in the middle, the oxygens are the red. And um, this is, pardon, it's a very old fashioned kind of model, but these springs represent the bonds. So there's two bonds between the carbon and each oxygen molecule. So one way to do it is called physisorption. That means you physically include this molecule in a pore. Okay. And the other way is it involves a chemical reaction. So you have to bend this bond and you bring in another oxygen, and then you get what people are also familiar with called carbonate. So again, a very large molecule, but we have taken those two bonds and we bent them, and then we brought in another one. And that's the kind we're working on. So we're working on materials that provide that extra oxygen that will allow it to bond. And that's uh, carbonate, is that what you said? Carbonate, yes, like lime. Um, the rock limestone. And so once you're able to add that on there, what does that do to that in the atmosphere? How does that take it out? Does that just change it to where it's not something that's as big of a concern? Or then you're using that once you add in that extra oxygen mo molecule and removing it from the atmosphere? Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's no longer a gas molecule. So this is a gas. It's floating around. And this becomes part of a solid. 
Okay, so we're designing the chemistry that converts this to the solid form. And so we call it its sequester or capture. And then thereby removing that from, from the atmosphere and, and reducing that amount of carbon dioxide that is in there uh, as a whole. So uh, that sounds like a very complicated process. I'm just gonna be honest here of, of doing that to, to get that out of the atmosphere. But that is what, what you've been working on here with this research, is that correct? Yes, precisely, yes. So we're developing new molecules that will do this reaction. And we're understanding how we can do this reaction so we can improve on these molecules or just and, new molecules that can do the same reaction. And looking at this as a whole, so how would you be able to, I guess, let's start off, start off with on the smaller scale here and then we'll get to the bigger scale. So how is it that you're able to, to do that, to add that in? What is the process of, of that, of adding in this extra oxygen molecule? Oh boy. Okay. So, so we don't do that. In a, in a simple <laughs> term. <laughs> That's what the molecules do. Um, so the kinds of materials that we need to design um, are materials that, that buy that extra oxygen. So make that extra oxygen very available and very reactive. And then when it reacts with the carbon dioxide, it makes a stable form. So it will the, the carbon dioxide will stay there, it will stick, it won't reverse and re-release back to the atmosphere until we do something that when we want to re-release it. So for that's called regeneration. So you use your material, it captures carbon dioxide by making carbonate, and then we do something to release it again so we can reuse the material. But we don't release it back to the atmosphere. Um, in, in a real life situation, it would be released to, uh, to store as a carbonate, or um, even there are some situations in pilot plant demonstrations where they can pump it to a greenhouse and you can use this gas for, for growing plants, for example. So finding a use, a use case for that, yeah, that's going to help out and be beneficial in some way once it's removed from the atmosphere. So talking about the carbonate itself, uh, uh, let's talk about the advancement that OSU made in removing that from the atmosphere. And I know that has something to do with this right here that we're taking a look at. Um, can you walk us through what it is that we're looking at and how this, uh, how this advancement played out? Okay, so, um, so this is a purple powder and it's, it's quite beautiful. And this is a vanadium atom and it's bonded to four um, molecules of peroxide. So probably heard of peroxide, you can buy it from the pharmacy, right? Uh, you can dye your hair with it, you can clean cuts with it. And it's also very reactive with carbon dioxide. So the right combination of this metal, the vanadium, and the peroxide bound to it uh, makes it very reactive and selective so that it takes that, you know, four out of, uh, out, of, out of 10 million molecules in the atmosphere and converts them to carbon dioxide. And yep, and, and, and the image that you're showing now, so we actually have, have a visual cue of this. So as it undergoes this reaction, it turns from that bright purple color to a yellow color. And that's part of that process of removing that and, and getting that out. So, so using this, and this is an advancement that, that Oregon State made, is just utilizing this material. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe that's, that's the advancement that OSU was on. So how would you do this on, say, a massive scale in order to remove this from the atmosphere? So, okay, so you're talking about the next step in the research. So we're, we're doing the fundamental side of this research. We're, we're understanding the chemistry, we're discovering new molecules, and if somebody were to advance it and scale it up. Um, so the process that is being done for direct air capture is if you can envision um, a bank of very large fans, and then inside the fans, they have beds of, of what's called a sorbent material. And there's many different kinds of sorbents that people are studying. This is just one kind that you can put inside. So it pulls the air over the sorbent bed at a fairly high rate. And um, as, it, as it flows over, the reactive material will grab that CO2 out of the air. Gotcha. So it's, it's really filtering it out as 
on on these, these bigger scales with the with the fans. What is what has the reaction been like from the research community that is working on this? And I know there's a number of different organizations that are working on it worldwide. But what's the reaction been since you announced this advancement that you you've been working on? Well, the, the reaction is that we have a, a new understanding of how these processes work and the process, the most important process being removing CO2, converting to carbonate. Um, we introduced some unanswered questions that still remain. And um, this is specifically on how another part of the molecule works. And um, and and we have a new tool in our toolbox, and and it's a molecule. So meaning it's a molecule, meaning we can put it on a surface, um, we can put it inside of another material. So so the how it's used can be very flexible. And this is something that all of these other organizations and people researching this can now utilize in their toolkit, I guess, if you will, as they're researching different ways to to clean carbon out of the atmosphere. Sure, yeah, I mean, that, that's how research works, is you, you right. build on the discoveries of other people and expand them and compare them to your own results. I mean, that's, that's great. I, I love the fact that it's you know, coming from Oregon State University. And can you just give us just one more uh, final thing here, just kind of an overview of this research, you know, all these other organizations. And I know that you personally, from what I understand, are, uh, are kind of in charge of a few of those. Can you talk about your role in the research there at Oregon State and then with the other organizations as a whole? Okay, so um, so the Department of Energy has has started funding a lot of projects related to the environment, and so um, some of them are carbon capture. So there's other groups you know, around the country that are working on their own projects. So different chemistries, different engineering methods to remove carbon dioxide from the air. And in our particular project, we have a few collaborators. So here at OSU, um, we have a computational chemist. So they are also participants on this study. And so what we do in the lab, they do in the computer. So we can show how or how well, and they can answer questions like why. And, um, and we also have some collaborators at Argonne National Laboratories and what they, they have special tools that they can look at precisely at the interface between air and water. So if we, we dissolve our molecules in water, they can see directly how the molecules grab carbon dioxide out of the air into the water. So kind of the first step of bonding. Wow, I mean, that's, that's really amazing and incredible that, that uh, you know, how all this research goes into it and, and everything that you're doing there at OSU. I think my final question is, uh, obviously this is a lot of work and a lot of people involved in this for this study and to, to come up with these solutions in this particular way. How does it feel for you to have this research now out there so that other people can utilize it? I mean, for, for me, it's really exciting because um, for, for most of my career, I have been largely focused on fundamental chemistry, um, which, is, which is also important. And there's still fundamental chemistry in this particular study. But, um, you know, for the first time in my life, really, well, not exactly, but um, <laughs> I, I, just the focus of our lab has been more about uh, applied research or use-inspired research. So. We're still interested in the fundamental chemistry, but you know, within this realm of fundamental chemistry, we want to understand how, how can we apply our knowledge to solving some of these global problems. And in this case, it's the climate crisis. Um, so I'm really excited about this work. And um, we have several more studies related that are, we're going to be publishing soon. And um, I'm really excited about those as well. Well, Professor, thank you very much for joining me here just to, to walk through this a little bit and this extremely complicated thing that you've, you've made it understandable here for, uh, for everybody. But, uh, but seeing what you're doing with it and congratulations on the success and I'm excited to see what the new studies are as well uh, once those are published. But uh, great job. Thank you, thank you. And, uh, and thanks for being here with me on Fox 12 Now too. I really appreciate it. I know you're busy and taking some time to join us here. Uh, it's it's uh, very much appreciated. It's been very nice talking with you and meeting you.
All right, and uh, we'll go ahead and just for everybody watching too, I'm just going to let you all know uh, this is Fox 12 Now, so thank you for joining us. We live stream here every weekday starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, covering a broad range of topics, things like this, finding out about amazing research coming from Oregon State University, or it could be any number of different things that we discuss on this show. You can find all of the segments on our website, kbtv.com. You can also find them on our apps, which are on every app store pretty much that you can go to. Uh, you'll find the Fox 12 Oregon app or Facebook and YouTube as well. So lots of places to find these segments. I appreciate you joining us. If there's any breaking news between 1 p.m. and 4 p.m., this is the place to go. But I'm going to sign off for right now. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.